I wanted to say thanks to everyone who took the time to watch my follow-up to The Boy in the Box, Joseph Augustus Cirelli video. As I was putting that video together and editing it and getting it ready to post, I came across a bunch of more um, links, a bunch more stories on Reddit, Web Sleuths. There's this whole world out there. Books have been written about this, and theories abound and are wide-ranging. And so many people really tend to believe the story that this Martha told yesterday as I was reading. And I had, I remembered this being a part of the original story that I talked about when I first made the very first video. Martha talked about having an uncle who would sometimes visit. And at those times, the mom would take the little boy out and clean him up. And this uncle would come by, and everyone would treat the little boy very well during the time that this man was there. And she came to believe that this was her, his real father. And this was her father's brother, according to reports that I read. And there's a, there's a man on YouTube who wrote a book about this, and this is his theory. Um, but we now know that if Joseph Augustus Sorelli was the little boy that her mother had, then it couldn't have been because Gus Sorelli was his biological father. Now, in the video that I made about this, I said that a lot of his family members suggested and believed that he never knew about the little boy. I, I tend to disagree with that after I read more about Betsy. It was said that Betsy went to live with a friend and I don't I couldn't find I had two different versions of this story one that was either her friend or one was it was her mother's friend but either way she went to live with this person during the last few months of her pregnancy and when she had the little boy she gave him over to this woman and her husband and the story was is that the husband didn't like the child and didn't want to keep the child and after a, about a year or two they got rid of the child I don't know um, and later on Betsy asked about him and what had happened to him and she was told this is this is according to family members through the years is that the little boy had died from an asthma attack now I found that kind of strange because I wondered did she ever look into an obituary did she ever look for a place where this child may have been buried and keep in mind, this would have been right around the time that the little boy in the box, you know, came out into the news. And, and it was all over the city. The child's body was on display and it was it, flyers of his picture were being put out there. And it's hard for me to imagine that she didn't wonder at some point, is it possible that this was the child? Because suddenly he disappeared and suddenly this little boy pops up dead. It was also reported that in the 1970s, Gus put a, a personal ad in the newspaper trying to contact Betsy. I would love to get my hands on that. I would love it if someone had a copy of that or if I could find that somewhere. Because I don't know if this was a personal ad that he took out in an attempt to reach out to her. Or if he knew about the little boy. And by this time, the child would have been a teenager or probably 18, and um, was he attempting to find the child? That was something that I wondered about. Maybe once he thought maybe if Betsy reached back out to him and they reconnected and he found out what had happened to the child, he could let his family know about this child. And this was just another theory. Um... Another theory is that the, the this Martha's mother, this Marjorie Davis, who was a librarian at the local school and worked as a volunteer, um, children would be brought by to the library, I guess, or she would go to some church or some group home or whatever it might have been and help to hand out food, candy, and toys and things to the children. It's believed that this may be how she came into contact with this little boy. And that through a substantial donation to the church or to the 
orphanage or whatever he may have been living in at that time, this is how she obtained this child. Um, this sounds perfectly reasonable because keep in mind, she was considered an affluent person. She was well educated. She had she and her husband both were high up in ranking in the um, community. As far as they lived in a, a nice neighborhood, they were they rubbed elbows with people um, high up. I don't know how else to put it, high-ranking people. This plays into this, conspir this conspiracy theory or this theory that this was covered up by some people in the uh, higher ranks and the police force. And I'm not talking about the men who were out there investigating this. I'm talking about people who had titles and such, you know. And Martha told that her mother and her father were both child molesters and that the people that would come to their home were also abusing this child and that she herself had been abused when she was younger. And uh, I, it's also a theory that they got this little boy because she was starting to get a little bit older. She was probably around 11 or 12 when the child came to live with them. And by this point, they had started to lose interest in her because she was starting, she was very tall, she was very um, big boned, as I guess is one way to put it. She was athletic built, and she was probably losing that childish stature, as like of what child molesters are interested in is little children, as disgusting as that is to say. But that's another theory that they went out and got this child. Some people believe that the mother was passing the child off as a little girl even though Martha said the child was never really allowed outside of the home. And um, so if that story is true, and if all that is true, then the child was basically kept in the basement until the parents wanted some use from him, and they would drag him upstairs. This plays into the uh, story that the child had very long hair, and that she was instructed to cut the hair off when he died. This is, um, a big part of this story is the way that Marjorie Davis would have found this child, and that's, that's believed to be the way that this occurred, was that she was putting on this persona of this giving, um, philanthropist, or whatever you might want to see her as, this person who was trying to help these little children who are orphans and um, she was just putting her image out there as being this giving helpful person when in fact she was really a very evil person she was a very very um, um, it, it gives me Jeffrey Epstein vibes this whole thing you know this child was beaten, and um, he did die from a head injury. It's, as forensics people through the years have studied the autopsy and have studied the pictures, they believe that he was beaten with an object. In one story that I, one video that I watched, this man had written a book about this. He says that the mother, this, I don't even like to use that word, this MD or Marjorie Davis, kept the child in the basement and let him sleep in a coal bin. She didn't, she didn't go and purchase this child or have this child brought into her home because she wanted a little boy to raise. She wanted an abused victim. She was a psychopath. And people will say, well, how could that possibly be? She was a librarian. She was an educated woman. She lived in an affluent neighborhood. She had friends who never saw that side of her. Well, most people don't. You, you never hear of a serial killer or a mass murderer who people describe as uh, horrible and awful and someone who is um, 
violent, they're always described as being kind and generous and nice and up. Uh, there are other theories about how the child died. Some people believe that this couple that Betsy gave the child to were the ones that actually killed him and that they had him up until his death. And this was another theory that this man and woman took the child and that he was, that the one theory is, is that the husband sold the child to this Marjorie and another is, is that he killed the child because he didn't want the child to begin with and had probably been abusive to him during the time that they had him. And um, Now Betsy, it was said that the man that she ended up marrying, this John Plunkett, that he was already married during the time that he was seeing Betsy and that he ended up divorcing his wife and marrying her. They went on to have four kids together and um, some people thought that he might have been the father of the little boy. And I wondered if maybe he, she thought that he was as well and had this um, connection to Gus Cirelli in an attempt to conceal that, to say Gus is the dad to keep people from thinking that this married man was the dad. But it turned out that Gus really was the dad because the DNA proved that he was. It was this um, Justin Thomas who had bought his girlfriend a DNA kit and they broke up and she never used it. So he used it that f was the first link to Gus Cirelli. And they contacted him and let him know that he had matched, his DNA had matched along the lines to this cold case that the police had been working on for since the 1950s. And this is how they were able to link him to Gus Cirelli because his grandmother's um, brother, maybe, or cousin, was Gus Cirelli. So, and there's so many different theories and stories out there. I came across so many that it would take me forever to sit here and talk about them all. But one way that people were wondering how Gus and Betsy had met, uh, it was believed that the people that she was friends with, and maybe this couple that took the baby, knew Gus and that he would go over to visit them and um, she would spend time over there and he would come over and spend time there. He was not married. She was not married. So it doesn't make much sense to me that the two of them would have to sneak to see each other. But this was another story, of, you know, and there's so much on Reddit. I couldn't go through it all in one day if I tried. There's so there's pages and pages and threads dedicated to each family member because this is one theory there was people there were people on reddit saying she was an alcoholic and that she was a slut and um i wondered if maybe she had been an abuse victim and maybe if these things were true that she was promiscuous she had had two children and gave them both up for adoption before the age of, by the age of 21 and in the 1950s this was a very you know taboo thing she would have been given that name of, of this uh, bad girl. And I wondered if her background was from an abusive home life. So I'm going to continue to research all this, but I wanted to come back and just throw some more of these theories out there. Um, I could go on and on all day with all the stuff that was on. But most people, after I made my very first video, and I had people saying, you're way off, this story was debunked. This Martha sto story has been debunked. Well, it hasn't ever been debunked. It was dismissed, and part of me and a big wide range of other people out there I believe it may have been dismissed or swept away because 
keep in mind it was 1957 when the child died. It wasn't until the 1990s. And it was reported that she had actually told her psychiatrist this at least 10 years before she went to the police. She was so scared of this, and she was so scared of her mother. And I don't know in what year her mother died, but she didn't come forward with any of this until well after her mother's death. It was probably the first time that she was able to finally feel some freedom. And um, her psychiatrist was probably trying to help get her to open up and talk about these things. I believe that her psychiatrist finally told her that maybe it would help her if she did help the police. And maybe things were being talked about publicly by that point. This was 40 years after the child died, and um, she would have been well into her 50s by this point. And all the people who were players or involved in this by that point in the police department were retiring and, and dying off. And maybe her mother knew some of these people. Maybe her mother had warned her throughout her life, if you ever talk about this, they will come after you, you know. I will tell them that you killed the child. But who knows what went on, you know. Uh, narcissists and these psychopaths like this Marjorie Davis obviously was. She mind-controlled this woman, this girl, from the time she was little. And who knows if she was even the child's biological mother, you know. Because she went out and bought one child. Who's to say she didn't go out and buy another? And... Um, I don't know, but these are just some theories. Some people might call them conspiracies. I'm going to post a bunch of links in the comments for those of you who might be interested in the sources of these stories. And there is so much more. It just goes like this rabbit hole of, of um, it's like a maze. And um, But I wanted to come back and just throw some more out there that I had kind of glossed over on yesterday's video and I appreciate everyone for watching there's a world of people out there interested in this story and hoping that and the man that I watched who had wrote a book about this story he said that he didn't think it would ever be solved and he was just so glad that when they were able to give this child a name and now that they know the name and they have kind of an idea of where the child was living I'm curious as if there's any living people. We know that there's at least one person who was still alive during uh, Betsy's lifetime because this family member who may have been a niece or nephew or a younger sibling uh, came forward and said that they knew about the pregnancies. They knew that she had given these two children up for adoption. And um, they knew a little bit more about it. Maybe they were kind of holding off on telling everything they knew. Maybe they were working with the police, or maybe they were um, working to promote a book. I don't know. But um, however this, whatever the true story is, it's tragic and it's sad. This child had no life, had no chance for a life. And... Um, Betsy maybe gave the child away thinking it was the best thing for her to do in the 1950s as an unwed mother. She would have been shunned. It's hard to believe that today we would look at that and think, you know, nobody would ever give that a second thought. But at that time, it was something that was very taboo and frowned on, and women that had children out of wedlock were just, you know, had a horrible time, and... Thanks for watching.